All right, guys, what is going on? So I'm out here in my backyard getting ready to keep a promise that I had made to you guys a few weeks back, and that is administrating onto myself the new highly anticipated Ranger Physical Assessment 2.0. Now, if you're somebody who's looking to go to ranger school here pretty soon and you hadn't heard this news already, or if you're looking for an update, ARTB down to Fort Moore is looking at doing away with the RPFT, the old PT test that would get you into rap week. And they want to replace it with a new test called the RPA 2.0. And I can tell you just by looking at it on paper so far, it is a much different test than the RPFT. And one of the biggest differences uh, between the RPFT and this new RPA 2.0 is that instead of having separate events like the five mile run, the push up, the sit ups and the chin ups all separately conducted. The RPA 2.0 is gonna be one long continuous event that you have to get done within a certain amount of time. And so far that time limit is 27 minutes. Now, what are the events that you have to complete? To kick off the event, the first thing you gotta do is a one mile run. You'll complete that and go immediately into the chin up event where you have to complete six strict chin ups. Immediately after the chin ups, you will go over and you will conduct a 100 meter, 40 pound kettlebell carry. 100 meters IMT, individual movement techniques, where you'll have to get down into the prone every five minutes with three to five second rushes in between. And then you'll top it all off with a Skedco drag for 100 meters carrying 185 pounds. And if it wasn't stuck already, I already know that's gonna be the worst part of all of this. And you're not done after that. After you're done with all that stuff, you still have to go out and complete, finish it up with a two mile run. And you've gotta get all those events done within 27 minutes or less. Now I do wanna say real quick that as of today, uh, which is the day before Halloween 2023, ARTB has not finalized this standard of testing. I'll get a little bit more into those details at the end of this video, um, but I just wanna let you know that this is the standard as we know it now, but they still are looking at implementing a little bit of change to this, just because they're think I think they think that the standard is a little too difficult based on some of the testing, but we'll talk about that a little later in the video. But for now, let me just show you how I got this set up in my own backyard to show you that you can do this on the fly as well if you just have the proper equipment. So I have a pretty decent backyard, um, but I don't have 100 meters of space, but I do have a 50 meter length of space, which is gonna go from this cone all the way, there's a cone over there, right before that small fence that you see, that's 50 meters for me. So I'm just gonna have to go there, there and back, and that'll be my 100 meter stint. And then I've got cones spread out every five meters so that I can conduct my IMT events. So I've got a cone there, cone there, so on and so forth, you get the idea. Every five meters throughout my 50 meters. So I'll hit each cone twice because I'm gonna have to go out and back. And then for actual weighted equipment, I've got my 40 pound kettlebells. All right, these are the kettlebells that I use for my own training. I use these for practicing with the ACFT, you know, stuff like that. And then I don't have a Skedco, which is what the test calls for, which is what I imagine Ranger School will actually test you with. They'll have an actual Sked, but I do have a sled, a 45 pound sled, and then I just threw some weight plates on it so that it adds up to a total of 185 pounds. And then I just got my handles attached to it, so I'll carry it like that. So I have everything here. Everything's more or less to standard, okay? It's enough to see if I have what it takes to get this done within 27 minutes. And then I almost forgot another major change between this test and the old RPFT or the current RPFT is that you will do this whole test in full OCPs and boots. The RPFT, if you didn't know already, that was always done in PTs, all right? Now you're doing everything in uniform. So I'm set up, I'm to Ranger Standard. It is definitely, um, you know, heat cat levels today. So I've got my sleeves rolled, I've got my bottoms unbloused, and I'm ready to conduct this test. The plan for my run is I'm just gonna carry my phone with me so I can get my Strava on. I'm gonna run out um, half a mile and then just run back. And I'll do the same thing just twice on the end. And doing it all that way will keep this legit and to standard, which is the most important part. If we're gonna be training for a standard, we need to do it to standard. I don't have a pull-up station set up outside, even though that's something I always kind of wanted to do. Maybe one day I'll do that. But I do have a pull-up station here in the garage, in the gritty gym. So what I'm gonna do is, since that's the first event you conduct after your one mile run, is I'll just leave my garage door open. I'll bang out those chin-ups. I'll come through uh, my back door and I'll jog over to my starting station of the 100 meters and conduct those events. And then I'll just retreat through here backwards to finish up my two mile run and then I'll stop time. All right, guys, so I think y'all have the gist of what's going on here. I think there's nothing left to do but to do it. So here we go. Wish me luck. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna keep track of my run times uh, with my Strava app on my phone, and then I'll keep my total time of the entire event right here on my watch. 
and I know the neighbors out here are just gonna think I'm crazy out here running around in, in my uniform. That's all right, I've done, I've done weirder things out here. They'll get over it. All right, got my Strava up, got the stopwatch ready to go. All right, three, two, one, go. Okay, one mile down, six, six minutes and 30 seconds. The camera fell, I think the wind blew it over, that's okay. All right, let's get these chin-ups done. I didn't account for having to mess with the camera so much. This will take a little bit of time off my time. Here we go. All right, luckily chin-ups is pretty easy. Grab my water. Wouldn't be surprised if they make you drink, have like a camel back with you this entire time. All right, I've hired my daughter for this, so I'm gonna hand you off to my assistant so you guys can actually watch this. Here we go. Got it? All right, cool. Tactical brakes will work out in this event. My time's still doing pretty good. You don't want to burn yourself out on this, I can tell you already. Those IMTs are rough. Ah! Okay. Get some quick water. Right about 10. 10.20 right now. I'm gonna start it from here. Go. Okay. Oh, oh God. Come on, keep going. Got done with my run? 26, 19, probably could have taken a few seconds off of that. Thank you. Whew, okay, but I got my two mile run down with an average pace of about eight minutes, which is as fast as I could go, guys. I'm not even gonna lie. I catch my breath for a second. Whoo, bro. Oh, I got a sun for a sec. Oh. Oh. That was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> Full disclosure, complete honesty here. Oh man, I might throw up. Um, well, first of all, I might throw up. Second, I did have a late night Halloween party last night and I had probably had a few too many. And honestly, I wasn't gonna do this today, but I was like, no, I told myself I'm gonna do it no matter what. So if it hurts, that's my own damn fault and it hurt. But hey man, it's all about balance, right? You gotta have some fun with the family sometimes. Whew, but hey, total time. 26.19 and that was like you know a few seconds added on because uh, I finished a little earlier from the driveway and I forgot to stop the watch so maybe take away a few seconds and then also all my equipment wasn't set up right where it should have been you know with a few seconds here and there but whatever we'll just say 26.19 and, and that way we're being fair we're not cheating ourselves. 
And that means we still got it done in standard. But that was not easy, guys. I will tell you that much right now. That is definitely something you're gonna have to train up for. You know, I'm the uh, kind of guy, like I could go do an RPFT, no problem. I could pass that on any given day, no problem. But the way that this is set up, it is just an absolute smoker for your legs. Like you have to have really good leg endurance um, and cardiovascular endurance to be able to pass this test. No, no doubt about it, hands down. Which is good, because what have I always been saying to you guys about Ranger School? Go back to any of my videos, I've always said it's all about endurance. It's a marathon, and this test really does test that for you. Better than the RPFT, I would say. It's a lot harder than the RPFT, a lot harder. I'll also say heat cats are gonna be a real thing. Like, I am sweating like crazy right now, and it's, I mean, it's like 80 degrees, but it's October, it's not super humid, it gets a lot hotter down there at Benning, I can tell you that. So they're gonna have to really consider how they're gonna go about wearing uniforms while they do this test. They're gonna have to be set up to receive some heat cats because that's definitely gonna happen out there. Yeah, I mean, I'm so wet. This is all sweat, you can't even, you can see a little bit of dry right there, but all sweat here. And I'm just pouring right now, like I'm, I'm dripping sweat. All right, so let's go over a quick recap. Let's see where we need to make sure we hit our time benchmarks and where we know we can make up some time if need be. All right, so to kick it all off, I got my one miler done in well, six minutes and 28 seconds, all right? Which is pretty good, and I, uh, I feel like I could have went faster, so I was working it like I was trying to conserve a little bit of energy, right, as much as I could, but I also knew I needed to go as fast as I could because that was the only time I was gonna feel like 100%, you know? After, I knew after these next events, after the one miler, I was really gonna be struggle busting. So I landed on a 6.30-ish uh, mile pace, and I would say that's probably where you need to be for that one mile, or that or faster. So that means I was around six minutes and 30 seconds when I came into the chin-ups. Obviously, you gotta give a few seconds wiggle room there because, you know, the chin-up bars weren't anywhere near the equipment, you know? No big deal, though. I came into the chin-ups. That only took a few seconds. No big deal. Made sure I kept good form. Got that done, and then I beat feet over here to my starting point for the 100-meter events. I was feeling pretty good at that point. The kettlebell carry, I would say, went just fine. I, uh... I tried to conserve a little bit of energy. I wasn't like 100% balls to the wall, but I was definitely teeter-tottering around like 80 to 90% effort on that one. And then in my mind, I knew that the IMTs was just gonna suck because it's really just burpees in motion for 100 meters. And I'm sure all you guys would agree with me that burpees in general just kind of suck. So that's really what it was. It was burpees with running in between. I did my best to just fall to the ground so that I saved myself as much energy expenditure and time by doing that. Just fell to the ground and got back up as fast as I could while moving forward. Halfway through that 100 meters of IMTs, I, I was really starting to feel it. Like I was like, oh shit, I'm tired at this point. Finished it up, immediately grabbed the 185 pound sked. They call it the drag, so I assumed I did it right. You know, I just pulled it uh, and I looked behind me the whole way just like the ACFT event. Makes sense to me that that's how they'd want to do it. But that event suck and I knew it was gonna suck because you're like severely winded at that point and I wasn't running it that was just something I was like all right I'm just gonna have to walk this out and just continue in motion the entire way um, and I honestly you saw you guys saw I had to take uh, a break a couple times so I lost a few seconds there but I had to I was so winded I was like dude I'm, I'm gonna just either pass out or throw up if I keep going so I need to give myself like a five second break just to catch my breath and I had to do that a couple times by the time I was all done I was sitting at around 10 20 I didn't do any calculation in my mind at that point, but as I started taking off, I was doing calculations and I realized that I was gonna have to hit around an eight minute mile in order to get this done in a decent time or in time in general, right? I knew if I stuck at least to around eight minutes, give or take a couple seconds, that I would come in with at least 30 seconds to spare. And that's exactly what happened. But guys, I was barely able to keep that eight minute mile and it wasn't fluctuating. It was like, it was struggle busting the entire way. There, there was no point where I felt better it was just like hard the entire the entire run. And I'm a runner, you guys know that. I like to run, um, but it's a whole different animal after all these events are said and done with the heat, the sun beating on you. Um, I had full uniform on, boots, and to be honest with you guys, the only thing I had to eat today was a bowl of cereal and that was like at eight o'clock in the morning. So I probably wasn't really hydrated appropriately and I didn't have enough energy. But we still got it done. We got it done in time. So it's definitely achievable, right? Oh, but again, guys, uh, I'm a pretty in-shape guy. I like to maintain a pretty good state of fitness, um, especially tactical style fitness, you know, things like this. I put 100% effort into that. Uh, 
And when it was all said and done, I only had 30 seconds to spare. So this is definitely something you're gonna have to train specifically for if they implement it to this standard. Now I promise you guys, I talk about a little bit of the research and some things that I found out um, over the last couple months, ever since they started rolling this thing out. So let's go over that real quick and then I'll let you guys go. So ARTB has been testing the RPA 2.0 with Ibolic and Abolic classes. And I got some people that have been hitting me up with some stats on how that's been going for them um, and how hard the test has been for those classes. And I can tell you that right now, uh, the latest and greatest is that roughly around 20% of those classes are able to pass a test as it stands now. That is much lower than the average pass rate of the RPFT. And again, these are iBullock and Abullock cats. You know, these guys and gals out there, are they just been training nonstop every day, so they should be able to pass this test, but they're having a hard time passing this test. And while it sounds great, uh, and you would think it would be great to have a difficult test standard to get into ranger school, you know, you don't want to have it so hard that nobody's passing because then you're just never going to have a school or you're going to have very minimal personnel being able to even get into ranger school. And it's not all about the RPA 2.0. Ranger school has plenty of additional challenges ahead of just the basic PT test that you get into the school with. So they're going to have to reconsider that uh, because as it stands now, I would say it's probably a little too difficult. Not impossible, but very difficult. Additionally, through my own Intel acquiring efforts, I have found that ARTB is absolutely looking to alter the 100 meter, 185 pound Skedco drag. Um, I have been told that they are looking at either making it uh, a lower weight standard or a shorter distance, you know, something like 50 meters instead of 100. My money is they're just gonna lower the weight so that they can maintain the 100 meter uh, distance and they can just have a track that's set up all the time through classes, all the different classes. Although it would make sense to keep the 185 pound standard because the whole point is to replicate dragging a casualty, right? But either way, that event's gonna get easier and that's really gonna help shave off some time, at least like anywhere between 20 to 30 seconds, I would say. But as it stands now, guys, today, the day before Halloween 2023, and I, I told you guys this uh, back when I first released the first news about the RPA 2.0, they gotta keep experimenting and they have to get it right before they really decide to implement it as the new Ranger School PT test standard. So we'll see how this all shakes out. I know that their cut date, and the date that they're shooting for is January of calendar year 2024. That's when they really wanna have us implemented as the new PT test standard for Ranger School. We are keeping a very close eye on that and updating you guys as best as possible as they roll out the new updates. I know a lot of you guys are gonna ask this question, so I'll go ahead and answer it now. The 13 week Ranger School Fitness Program at GradySoldier.com is still the fitness program that you should be using to get ready for Ranger School. We have not altered it at all yet to help you train for the RPA 2.0 because we don't really know what the RPA 2.0 is gonna look like when this is all said and done. For all we know, they're gonna scratch it. So we don't wanna set you up for failure, and I can also assure you that that program is not only geared to help you pass the RPFT, it's setting you up to be physically prepared to have that muscular and cardiovascular endurance that you're gonna need for the entirety of Ranger School, not just the PT test on day one, guys. So don't stress about it too much. I will say that when they do decide to drop the new standards, the set and sewed standards for the RPA 2.0, we will revamp that program to reflect accordingly, but it's not gonna change too much. But with all that being said, I would encourage you guys, if you are looking to go into ranger school or if you're just looking to challenge yourself in general, I would definitely run through the RPA 2.0 um, a few times for yourselves just so you can see what it feels like and how hard it actually is. You don't wanna be going through the RPA 2.0 for the first time your day one at ranger school. Let us know how you feel about the RPA 2.0. And if you guys have any additional information on it yourselves uh, that you can share with the rest of the community, please do that, all right? Because this is supposed to be beneficial for everybody that's watching it. And the more information that we have on the subject, the better. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. I talk about all sorts of things on this channel. Uh, this is the, probably the best channel out there for information in regard to Ranger School. So if you're one of those guys that are getting ready for Ranger School, definitely subscribe to this channel. But if you're into fitness, if you're into military information or just overall motivation in life, you will benefit from the information put out on this channel as well. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. But for now, guys, I think I'm gonna clean up my equipment, clean up myself, get myself something good to eat and enjoy the rest of my Sunday. So besides that, I've got nothing else for you, and I'll see you on the next one.